All right, guys, welcome back to another video. If it is your first time here or if you've been watching for a while and you aren't subscribed, make sure to hit that subscribe button and also check out my Spotify link is in the description. But we are going to start off here. We're going to talk about one of the most controversial games this year, and that is Stellar Blade. It's been controversial for a number of reasons, particularly here in the West. It's controversial. Uh, the game is uncensored. They went through all the ratings and it's uncensored in every single region. But the controversy here is surrounding the main character and the way that she looks and how she is portrayed and people being for and against this. If you go on social media, it is just continuous discussion and back and forth on this. So a lot of people had a question as to how this game was going to review, how Stellar Blade was going to do with the controversy surrounding it. And this isn't the first time that we have seen this. We've seen a game like Hogwarts Legacy come out to immense controversy where it ended up doing extremely well, not only in the reviews, but also in the overall commercial success of the game being the top selling game, which was insane. And it deserved it because Hogwarts Legacy was phenomenal. And now you have Stellar Blade here, which you could say is kind of maybe 20 24's version of a major controversy and we will see how it does end up in sales in a couple of weeks and if that helped push it to sell more copies but in terms of the reviews it looks like it's done pretty good it hasn't suffered too much as right now on metacritic it is sitting at an 82 i guess it really depends on how you look at it for me an 82 is a good score it means it's a game that i'd be interested in seeing more about it and checking it out and playing it i generally don't even really look at review scores if it's a game that i do want to play i will play it for myself and make my own decision but with Stellar Blade, I've already played the demo, and I'm not surprised that it has about an 80 plus on most of the reviews because I thought the demo was a ton of fun. So it looks like it is beating some of the negativity that was trying to push be pushed at it before the game was released. But now that it has released, it has entered even another controversy now this one is kind of crazy that it was able to slip through the cracks but as somebody who lives in the west and understands how terrible of a term that got slipped through here on the game how terrible that term is i tried to get an understanding as to why this would happen and gene park put out a very good uh, tweet to kind of make me understand it from, I guess, the Korean perspective. But if you have missed what has happened here with Stellar Blade, there was some racist language that was found within the game. You can take a, a look at the picture here. It is graffiti beside the name of the R shop. That's, I guess, where you go and you purchase different parts of uh, different items for the game. And they had the graffiti that says hard right beside the R shop which is a, a terrible reference. And obviously this got caught and obviously people were asking questions as to how this could get through into the game because a very offensive. And now we know that it was a, but what they're saying, very unintentional. They've already patched it out. They replaced hard with crime. And here is kind of what they say. The placement of the two graphics near each other in Stellar Blade resulted in an unintentional, objectionable phrase. Shift Up had no intention of creating offensive artwork and will be replacing the graffiti for day one patch and i try to look at this from multiple perspectives because from my perspective i look at this and i'm like that's crazy how could they allow this to get through not good but then i look at it from the perspective of people of the korean descent people who live in south korea and gene park put out a great tweet in terms of why this would have potentially gone through. And he says, I'm going to be defensive because Koreans are always falsely accused of saying the N word because we have two very common words that sound like it. This is not a phrase that exists in Korea. And it was just last year that Linus Tech Tips thought the phrase was ableist. And it's him questioning the fact as to whether this was an accident or not. Now, the reality is we can only take their word for it. They're saying it's unintentional, but we were not in their brains. So maybe somebody did this intentionally. You never actually know. But from the South Korean perspective, from the Korean perspective, this term isn't even in their vocabulary. So they may have looked at this and really had no idea what the issue was going to be when it did get released. And on the other side of things, generally, when you look at art like this in video games, if it is something that pops up all the time, and is all over the world, I feel like it is just randomly placed. They're not specifically going out and placing it on every single spot because I think that would just take way too long. But that is the other controversy surrounding this game. Stellar Blade, very controversial game. We know it is a PlayStation 5 exclusive title. 
And from what I've played again in the demo, I think it is going to do overall well in terms of sales because it is pretty fun. But if you've been waiting, because I think a lot of people have been waiting what the results were going to be for the reviews for Stellar Blade, just based off of all the controversy surrounding it. It looks like they've beaten it, at least for now, in a decent way. I, like I said, I think 80 plus means that the game is good and, and worth checking out for people who are looking at review scores. And we will see how this game continues to develop as more people do pick it up and jump into it after the official release so that's the stellar blade talk let's move over here and let's talk about blizzard as we have some information here about an unannounced game or they're seeking employment for an unannounced game it says blizzard is seeking a handful of directors to work on an unannounced game the open positions include six director roles including creative director and narrative director they say it's hard to glean much information about the project from the job descriptions but it sounds like it's in the very early stages and to me this is interesting because they canceled project odyssey now, we didn't know too much about Project Odyssey, but we did see some reactions online after the cancellation with disappointment. So I'm guessing that's from people behind the scenes that had already kind of seen the game or knew more about it. But now they're starting to work on a new game and you would have thought they were canceling it to kind of reduce their costs and focus on their current IPs that they already have. And clearly that is not the case. They've had the reductions in staff from Microsoft and, and Blizzard now after the merger. And now they're looking at, I guess, expanding out and making some new IPs with these hirings. Who knows what it will be, but I like Blizzard. I mean, Blizzard, there's lots of different opinions. They've gone downhill for a lot of people. They were way better back in the day. Like I was a big StarCraft II fan and I could definitely say, yeah, Blizzard has changed, but I do like the stuff they put out. I'm excited for the expansion of World of Warcraft. I think I will event now because of that try it again and i'm hoping that they do bring it to console at some point but i'm excited to see kind of what happens here with a brand new ip what they're going to be able to create because blizzard have whenever they create new ips generally they are relatively successful so we'll keep our eyes on this and we'll see if there are any more hires and if any more information will be able to come out about whatever blizzard is working on now when it comes to xbox and your captures we've already heard that they are deleting captures and now there is a new message here revealing that captures will be deleted as of may 30th so this is what you have to know in case you don't want to lose your captures just make sure to take them off of your xbox save them somewhere else so that you always will have them it says if you have some memorable game captures from your achievement hunting adventures saved to the xbox network you might want to start backing them up now a new xbox message has revealed that microsoft will start deleting xbox game captures older than 90 days from may 30th so for may 30th older than 90 days make sure you've backed up everything that you want to keep or you will risk eventually losing some great captures that you won't be able to have for yourself. You won't be able to show your friends. You won't be able to post on social media, all of those types of things. So just keep, be aware of that. All right, let's talk about Grounded because as we know, Grounded is releasing on the PlayStation 5 and the Nintendo Switch. And we talked about the Sea of Thieves and the difference between the versions on the PS5 and the Xbox Series X, how there was some slight difference in shadows and things that really you could only see in a comparison. But I brought up the question as to even if that's the case, is that acceptable for Xbox fans? As in my opinion, there's no game that is coming from an Xbox first party that should ever be running better on the competing platform on the PlayStation 5. It should at the very least always be on par. They should make sure that that is the case. Not because I think it really makes a difference in how the game plays. It barely even makes a difference in how the game looks. But from the optics point of view, you're going to see that talking on social media. And I feel like Xbox, they will want to avoid that. They will want to avoid that negative discussion around how they treat their first party games. Now we have Grounded, which is getting that analysis. And it seems like now it's happening here, but it's the reverse where the game is actually running better on Xbox, which again, I think that is okay because it is from a first party game. I think at the end of the day as well, though Xbox behind the scenes wants to make these games run on par everywhere. It's just about optimizing from each platform, but Digital Foundry did their analysis and there's some interesting things that did come out of it, but generally it is the Xbox version that is at the better version specifically when it comes to the 60 frames per second it says the xbox series x is a solid 60 fps throughout barring occasional one frame drops and the odd hitch while auto saving kicks in while you go to the playstation 5 very different results as on its latest patch 1.02 we're getting a 60 fps line in parts 
but too often we see it plummeting into the 50s or as low as 45 fps and then same thing here when it comes to the resolutions it is far better on the xbox it says ps5 version is also operating at a lower dynamic range right now ps5 is between 1080p and 1215p compared to 15 12p and 4k on the xbox series x there are some things here from the ps5 that are better but overall it is a better experience on the xbox consoles they say the ps5 version does have advantages over the series x version such as improved geometry lod's and higher quality shadows so those are smaller things but the shadows has been a running theme for games that are first party xbox games that have launched onto the playstation 5 we've seen these shadows better on hi-fi rush on playstation 5 and on sea of thieves and again here with grounded so i feel like there's just something there in the optimization in the development and what they are doing that is creating this differentiation in shadows and i, I feel like it will be picked up and fixed with patches but grounded the best place to play it is on the xbox console now when it comes to sales we talked about this the other day as well where we have seen the playstation 5 kind of dry up a bit here is specifically in europe as they're behind the playstation 4 and that brings into question things that phil spencer has said where the console market has stagnated they have to find other ways to find consumers because the console market is not growing and i think the console sales are kind of proving that overall for both platforms and even here we have the xbox series x now this difference is far less than what we saw with the playstation 4 versus the playstation 5 of sales in europe but the xbox series x and s is an estimated 674,000 units behind the xbox one after 41 months in europe and again i think this is just really proving that they have found their console market they have the consumers that want to buy the xbox consoles now how do they expand that out it doesn't really matter how many big games that they are putting on their service, how many big games they are putting on Xbox. It is getting very hard to expand out their consumer base via just the console, which is why we are seeing Xbox do what they are doing, which is putting games on other platforms, being as open as possible with their ecosystem and allowing people to access Xbox no matter what screen they are on. I think it's a very smart move. All right, let's jump over here and let's talk about a refund policy at Valve where there was a loophole that people were literally being able to play unlimited hours of a game before it was released and then get a full refund for it unfortunately for those that really enjoyed that loophole valve has caught this but it isn't all bad news as they are still allowing you to play for two hours for advanced access games to see if you like it and then you can still get a refund it says valve has updated the steam refund policy to essentially close a loophole which allowed players to accrue several hours of playtime through advanced access then receive a full refund at launch the refund policy now includes a revised refunds on titles purchased prior to release date section which adds an official advanced access label and a essentially applies Valve's normal two-hour time limit to these games, and advanced access refers to games which can be played ahead of their official launch by purchasing a special edition at an additional cost. So you can still pick these up early before they are officially released, and you can still play them for up to two hours to see if you like the game, and if you don't, you can go ahead and return it. But now you're not going to be able to play it for countless hours, which was a loophole that they had found. And finally, to end things off, Modern Warfare 3 and Warzone Season 3 Reloaded, they have been detailed. So here is what to look forward to. This is launching on May 1st at 12 p.m. Eastern, 9 a.m. Pacific, and it will give you new multiplayer maps, modes, and the next story mission for zombies and the special perk package in Warzone, amongst many other things. So on the multiplayer side of things, which is what I like to play the most when it comes to Call of Duty, it is the mid-season update will add Grime, which is set around a derelict London canal and Checkpoint, which is based on Rebirth Island's Stronghold. So those are maps that are going to be coming. A minefield new multiplayer variant in which each mode basics rule set remains the same, except that eliminated players drop a proximity mine on their way out, which can be picked up and is deadly to their own team. So that's a new multiplayer variant coming in. There is a new mode called Escort, which plays out over two rounds and challenges players to escort a mall with the 
goal of hacking three points on the map and the vehicle only moves forward if an attacking player is located nearby while defending players can push it back in the other direction so think like overwatch that game mode there where you're moving the cart forward and you have to be around it to move forward i love that game mode so this is actually really cool i'm going to definitely be checking and playing escort there will also be a mid-season arcade playlist supporting a variety of maps and modes featuring power-ups and special weapons pickups and a new anomaly strikes the exclusion zone as the third dark aether rift appears and this is for the latest zombies mission they say dr jansen has been lured through its portal and the operators of operation deadbolt must now conduct a rescue mission with ravenov's help to get her back before it's too late they say prepare to face off against a horde of foes in the mid-season story mission including a new disciple variant that will put your squad's slaying skills to the test. So there you have the season three stuff for the multiplayer and zombies. And then Warzone season three's headline edition was the return of the fan favorite map, Rebirth Island, along resurgence mode, which player allows players to respawn as long as one of their teammates is still alive. And then it will also introduce a specialist perk package, which grants players all available perks when activated and new kill streak foresight, which shows users the location of all future gas circles in the match there's also the weapon and trade station returning and a new utility box field upgrade which combines ammo and armor boxes and there will be a new heavy armor public event which is a rare occurrence at infill that raises the number of armor plates players can carry buffing the total number of health points from 150 to 200 for the whole match so there you have it there is season three Lots of cool stuff there that I'm excited to eventually go in there, check out and play, especially that escort game mode. Excited to try that one out. But I want the video there, guys. If you did enjoy this video, hit that thumbs up. If you are new here, hit that subscribe and I will catch you guys in the next video.